back. You're listening to The Real Side, not the right side. Not the wrong side, but The Real Side. I'm your host, Joe Messina. Hey, guys, thanks for hanging out. American. And, uh, you know, before I go off on that and not bring my guest back on, I think I should just bring him right back on. Dr. Olive, Oliver McGee is on. He's the author of Jumping the Aisle, How I Became a Black Republican in the Age of Obama. Dr. McGee, again, thanks for hanging out with me. I do appreciate it. Thank you, Joe, for bringing me back on the real side on the back side. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> We've been looking for another name, so you know, instead of afterburner, Bill Whittle's <laughs> going to shoot me if I keep using that name. So we'll have to use we'll have to use the backside of the real side. There you go. Although, wouldn't that be the wrong side? Do I really want to do that? <laughs> no, I, I always think there's a right side and an up and a left side and an upside and an outside and inside and an outside. Well. <laughs> All right, so we were we were you know we were dealing with with uh, more government, how it hurts or helps minorities and what have you. And do minorities today, and when I say minorities, you know I'm not talking about I'm not just talking about blacks. I, I'm talking about the whole group of minorities in this country. Uh, do they still have right. the hope of the American dream as our parents knew it? You know, I believe that in general people have hope. It's just that in this election cycle. Are we talking about hope? <laughs> not, not his I hope. So. Not his hope. <laughs> I think we're talking about nope. We're talking about nope instead of hope. This, have we become uh, a discussion as nation about no instead of yes? We're getting to no instead of getting to yes. And, and the negotiation with the electorate is about getting to yes. And getting to possibilities, that's one of the reasons why I wanted to uplift the book in the end and say, well, on getting to 2076, that's an ana- that's been a dynamic movement of getting to yes. And I even have a history of science and technology in this book dating back from the Bounty Fathers in 1776 all the way up to 2012. And that says that when we look at American science and technology achievement, that's what we do good. Darn are we good at science and technology in America. That's a story of getting to yes on the American experience. And that's why I continue to say in the book, America is extraordinary in that. And that's what makes Americans Americans are good, and that's what makes America work. Yeah, but you and say I don't know if anybody is saying that those three things in this election. I don't hear that coming at all. No, I just see commercials streaming with uh, Ronald McDonald characters <laughs> of Big Bird. <laughs> well, here's... when did we start talking about Big Bird? And I don't know if that is getting a yes on America is extraordinary. Well, it's one way to make people <laughs> one way to make people pay attention. You usually don't tune in, but you know when it comes to excellence, I, I have a favorite saying of mine. I say excellence never comes by accident. All right, you have to work at it. Right. You have to dig it out. You have to figure out how to make it happen and, and at least push towards it. I don't yeah. see that happening in our country anymore. I don't see us raising and, – and I know some people get mad at me when I say this, but the Bill Gates of the world, the Thomas Edisons of the world, I don't think we're raising them up anymore. Uh, I, I think we are. I just think that they're becoming a silent majority. So you think you they're know, still out we, there, but they're just quiet. That's right. Because we're getting the media discussion that we are allowing to happen. And every media out of the day is so focused on politics that we forgot about the social, the technological, the economic, the uh, environmental, to, that, to some extent. And I'm not talking about just global warming and then global warming inside presidential debates. That's ridiculous. But I'm talking about the environment of America that is still growing and is still competitive. That's what I mean by the environment. Those other parts of the peak forces that are impacting America and its future are not being discussed. We're only talking about the place for politics. Well, that's war. Well, I know, I know when, when we talk about math and science, I loved our president last week who said, you know, he wanted to hire another 100,000 math and science teachers and, you know, Romney wants to kill it all. And I'm turning around, I'm screaming without having a mic on, I'm screaming, I'm saying, you can hire 300,000 more math and science teachers. If we don't have good teachers, it doesn't matter how many you hire. If we, if we can't get past all the garbage that we have to go through in education to teach our kids, this is this is a ridiculous point to make. My when I was going through 
my, my elementary school, North Avondale Elementary at, uh, in Cincinnati, Ohio, and then on to Woodward High School, Cincinnati Woodward High School, which is the oldest public high school um, uh, west of the Appalachian. Uh, that is, I was going to those schools when school still worked. And that was, you had to take algebra and trigonometry and geometry, and then you had to go on and take a, a pre-calculus. You had to take social studies. You had to take social sciences. You had to take the sciences itself. And then you had to actually go to a gym and put on some gym clothes and actually do some gym. So that you could exercise and, and have a mind, body, and spirit going forward. That's no longer happening in schools today unless you are in a private and an outdoor-oriented school or in a very strong uh, or strong sport or suburban neighborhood or in a private school. So that, that's not an education of the general sense of America. It is the de-education of America. Mm-hmm. Well, and we're, we're not focusing on how those reading, writing, listening, and speaking skills so that you can go and meet me in a college classroom when I'm teaching aircraft engine propulsion and thermal science and then uh, your eyes are not rolling over your head, and I'm speaking gibberish. <laughs> yes, when you were talking about it, my eyes were rolling over in my head. Uh, yeah. I, I want to bring it back to something I said earlier, though, and, and I want to drive a point home. I want people to understand something because, you know, I'm I'm the middle-aged white guy that has no right speaking about minority issues, according to most people. Now, in Washington, D.C., the black community, from an educational standpoint, I won't talk about anything else, just education – we're suffering tremendously. They are they are there around the center of our country, and the black community was being treated like crap. Michelle Ree comes in. She starts to clean up the education uh, scenario there. She The 39 charter schools are put in place. There's 31 public schools, and the kids get vouchers to go to the schools that are good for them. All of a sudden, what happens? The graduation rate rises. The kids are doing better. My God, could you imagine? Why would? You, and what do they do? You've got a, you've got a, a uh, forgive me, but you've got a black president who comes in and he's one of the most outspoken people to shut it down. Why would you do that to yourself? Help me understand. Well, I went to Wharton and Chicago, and Chicago school in particular, uh, in a particular sense, is uh, the Milton School of Economics, the Milton School, Milton Friedman School of Economics. Oh, very good. Okay. And old Milton says. In his classic book, uh, Free to the Two, says uh, school vouchers is a way to get towards economic freedom and economic development. And you have to put in all communities, not just some communities, the communities of the have and have not, free school choice. Mm-hmm. And when you do that, his, his evidence shows, and this is why he gets a big old Nobel Prize in economics, <laughs> his his evidence shows that uh, students excel when they're at high-performing schools that they have a choice to go to with their vouchers. Mm-hmm. Uh, we are still in that sociological state on that in some communities as to what is right and what is not. But when we get down to the real aspects of performance, no matter what slogan you want to put on it, race to the top or race from the bottom, <laughs> going to the left and going to the right and, and coming from the inside and moving on to the outside. We're going in so many directions. We're on the roundabouts of Washington, we're all busy with our left turn and our right turn. No kids are being educated. And so when they come into college and meet my thermal dynamics in class and propulsion class at Howard University, there's so few that are in there because they're the ones who just, are just the only ones we have left. I oftentimes say that I enjoy teaching uh, propulsion science at Howard University because I'm teaching rocket science to black kids. Well, that's a contribution to the nation in itself. You know, Doctor, I... if we don't if we don't get in front of this education piece quickly in the crisis mode as it is, we're going to lose the country. You know, I think I think I have a caller on hold. Well, let me let me check and see. This is the real. Yeah, hello, this is the real side. Did you have a question for the doctor? You can hear me, right? Yes, I can. Okay, well, you know, I was just, uh, you guys are Republicans or Democrats? Well, uh, I'm I'm a Republican, and and Dr. McGee is uh, is recently uh, Republican, I believe. 
Okay, so um, I, you know, I think that uh, based on Romney's plans, Obama, you know, but he's not doing this. It's a program. Yeah, there was there was there was somebody who just wanted to get uh, on the radio. So the heck with him. Anyhow, <laughs> like I get him. I don't know. I will applaud freedom of speech. There you go. That's the Constitution. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. But see, here's, here's what I tell people. There's freedom of speech everywhere except where I have control of the microphone, in which case, <laughs> freedom of my speech. But anyhow, um, you that's know. That's what makes America colorful. That's true. No, I, I give you that. I, I, uh, people have been listening to me for a while now. Yeah, everybody's got a right to say what they want, believe what they want, think what they want. I just don't have to buy into it. That's my right. So, uh, <laughs> so let's let's get to the real part of this. Let's go back to uh, – Preparing for tomorrow, you know, we talked about it. Uh, again, if you've just tuned in, you're listening to the real side, not the right side, not the wrong side, but the real side. I'm your host, Joe Messina. I've got Dr. Oliver McGee on, author of Jumping the Aisle, How I Became a Black Republican in the Age of Obama. If you want to call in on the conversation, it's 323-843-6155. All right, so, Dr. McGee, we, you know, one of the things we wanted to talk about a little bit was the um, what the president and Mitt Romney have to do to pre- prepare for tomorrow night. And uh, you've got some thoughts already laid out. You've obviously given us some great thoughts. So give us your thought on what needs to be done tomorrow night. 